Okay, welcome to our first lesson on adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. This lesson is pretty basic. If you remember simple adding and subtracting fractions with just real numbers, then you should find that being able to add and subtract algebraic fractions won't be too different. What I'd like for you to do is to follow along in your note sheet um, and work the example problems and take notes. There will be a couple of problems that I asked for you to try on your own. And when you do that, if you will just pause the video, see if you can work it, and then when you're ready to check your answer, press play and see how you did. All right, well, our first problem should be a review for you. The question is, do you remember 2 thirds plus 1 fourth? Okay, this is different from multiplying and dividing fractions because we can't just add across numerators and add across the denominator. We have to find what is called the least common denominator before we can add or subtract. And to find the least common denominator, you first have to look at your two denominators and you find what is the least common multiple. So I'll make a little note of that. This is your least common multiple. You can actually use any common multiple, multiple, but the least common multiple is gonna avoid you having to do any further simplification. So when I look at the numbers three and four, and I think of the multiples of three, there are three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, and then I think of the number four, its multiples are four, eight, 12, 16. There we go. I've already said the least common multiple. So our least common denominator is gonna be 12. Now what you need to do is you need to make 2 thirds and 1 fourth to be expressed as a fraction with a denominator of 12. So what I start off as doing is I will write my problem 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. But do you notice how I leave a little bit of space? Because I'm gonna then fill in with a simple multiplication problem. I ask myself, okay, three times what equals 12? And that's gonna make a fraction with a denominator of 12. So in this case, three times four equals 12. And then I'm gonna multiply also the numerator by 12 because the number four over four is really one. When I multiply two thirds by four over four, I'm not changing the value of anything. All right, so then I'm gonna move on to 1 fourth. What number times four equals 12? Well, if I think back to the first pro uh, number, it's three. So I'm gonna multiply the denominator by three and the numerator by three. So now that I've set that up, 2 thirds times four over four equals 8 twelfths plus 1 fourth times three over three which is 3 twelfths. Now we're in business. We have like denominators. Once you have like denominators, you can add across the numerators, or if you are subtracting, you can subtract the numerators. So eight, my, or eight plus three is 11. So my final sum is 11 over 12. You wanna make sure to see if that final sum simplifies. And in this case, no, 11 over 12 does not have, um, there aren't any common factors between 11 and 12, so I can't simplify any further. But be sure that you're always checking for it. Well, that was an easy review. So let's move on to adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. So the only difference here is that we're putting variables in our numbers. But don't let the variables throw you because they act just like regular numbers. So here's my problem. I have x over three plus five x over six. And you, again, ask yourself, hmm, what is gonna be the least common denominator here? If my denominators are three and six, the least common denominator between the, or least common multiple between three and six is six. So this is a nice case because I don't have to change the second fraction because it already has a denominator of six I only need to change the first fraction. So I'm gonna take x over three and I need to multiply it by something that's gonna give me a fraction over six. 
So you think, okay, three times what equals six? Okay, that would be two. And so then I'll fill in plus five x over six. And again, I don't need to change five x over six because it already has the least common denominator. So I'll simplify. Two x over three times two over two is two x over six plus five x over six. Okay, and then we add across the numerator. So I'm gonna write my denominator first, just to remind myself that that is my common denominator. And then when I add 2x and 5x, those happen to be like terms because the variable attached to the two and the five are the same. So 2x plus 5x is 7x. And then once you've done that, look at your numerator and denominator and check for any like common, or sorry, check for any common factors. 7x and 6, no common factors there. So that's my final answer. All right, so I'd like for you to try now. The problem is 3b over 5 minus 2b over 3. So if you would pause the video and then try working it on your own. Once you have finished working it, press play again and check your answer with mine. All right, well hopefully you have worked through the problem and you have found a final answer. So I'm gonna work through this quickly and see what my, first of all, what my common denominator is. And in this case, my least common denominator is 15. So I'm gonna take 3b over five and multiply it by three over three. And then I'm gonna take 2b over three and multiply it by five over five. So this would be nine B over 15 minus 10 B over 15. So now I have two fractions with the same denominator. Nine B minus 10 B is negative one B or just negative B. And all of that goes over 15 and then you compare, negative B compared to 15. Ask yourself, are there any like factors that I can cancel? Well, in this case, no. And we're done. Okay, so let's move on to my next type of problem. Those other two problems had real number denominators, so you should be fairly familiar with finding a common denominator whenever the, there are no variables but these problems have a variable in the denominator. So look at my example. 2a, or sorry, 2 over a plus 3 over c. You still need a least common denominator. In a problem like this, where my denominators are two completely different variables, the easiest least common denominator is just the product of those two denominators. So in this case, I'm gonna consider my least common denominator to be the number a times c. Um, if you were to have usually any two uh, variables that have similar factors, then we'll get into those problems later on. But right now, if they're completely different variables, just multiply them together to get your least common denominator. So I'm gonna start with 2 over a plus 3 over c, and I'll fill it in red, maybe it helps you see a little bit better. The number that I need to multiply a by to get a c is a c, so I'll multiply by c over c. And then for my second fraction, 3 over c, well the number I need to multiply c by to get a c would be a over a. So this is gonna become 2c over ac plus 3a. And just to make sure all of my work looks nice and neat, instead of writing it ca like I had written on the previous line, I'm just gonna arrange them the same. So that way I can see absolutely, without any doubt, that this is a like denominator. All right, so we're left with 2c 
over AC plus 3A over AC. So my like denominator, I'm going to put a fraction bar in, and then I'll just fill in with AC. And then look at your numerators, 2C plus 3A. Those are not like terms, and that's okay. Whenever you don't have like terms, we can't collect any like terms, so we're just going to write it out as 2C plus 3A. And that's okay. Leave it like that. If you want to put parentheses around it, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But what I do encourage you to do is once you've combined the numerators like that, look and see if there are any like factors that you can maybe factor out and then use to simplify the fraction. And in this case, no like factors, nothing I can factor anymore. So my final answer is 2C plus 3A over AC. Great, all right, now you try it. Our problem is gonna be seven over x minus five over two x. So press pause, <coughs> excuse me. Press pause and when you're done, press play and see how you did. All right, so again, whenever you're adding or subtracting, make sure you identify the least common denominator. And notice how I'm always putting this off to the side. I like to make note of least common denominator when I'm working so that, first of all, if my teacher were grading this, she could see exactly what you were trying to accomplish when you were changing up your denominators. And it helps you maybe identify any common factors. So if I'm looking at x and 2x, I don't need to multiply these two together. I don't need to make it 2x times x, which would be 2x squared, because I already have a 2x. Look at your common factors, and you only need a minimum of what they have in common. So for example, if these two denominators have a minimum, or sorry, a maximum of one x in common, I said minimum, I meant maximum. Use whatever maximum they have in common. If they have a maximum of one x in common, then my common denominator needs to have one x in it. Um, other factors, I also have a two, so my least common denominator has to have a two. So since there are no other common factors, then my least common denominator is going to be two x which is actually great news because this means I don't have to change the second fraction at all. All I have to do is change the first one. So I have seven X minus five over two X. So leave five over two X alone because it already has the denominator two X. And I'm gonna multiply the first fraction by two over two. because that's the factor that I'm missing. So this equals 14 over 2x minus five over 2x. Now we have a like denominator, so I'm gonna write it here over 2x. 14 minus five is nine. And there we go, nine over two X. There are no common denominators that we can cancel, so I leave it alone. Okay. Here's a special type of problem. I've titled it adding fractions and whole numbers. Um, this sample problem, B over three plus one, so one is a whole number. Basically, I wanted to drive home um, whenever you're adding a fraction to a number that doesn't necessarily have a written denominator. But if you remember, all numbers have a denominator. If there's nothing there, then that number is technically over one. So my least common denominator between three and one is three. So I can leave the first fraction alone. I can leave it as b over three 
plus one over one times, and I'm gonna multiply this by three over three. So really this problem is b over three plus three over three. Three over three equals one, so we're great. Now we have a like denominator, which is three. So I'll go ahead and fill in the fraction bar, put in my like denominator, and now I'm gonna add my numerators b plus three, those aren't like terms, so I'm just gonna write it as the expression b plus three. And again, none of these happen to be simplifying, but that doesn't mean there aren't problems out there that will simplify, keep an eye out for them. But in this case, there are no common factors that I can simplify, and so I can move on from this one. All right, one more problem. I want you to try this one on your own a over four minus a. So press pause, work the problem, and then when you're done working and you think you have an answer, press play and check your work with mine. Okay, so if we remember from the previous example, any number that doesn't have an explicit denominator written, you always assume that that denominator is one. So my least common denominator here between four and one is four. So I'll keep a over four the same, minus a over one, but to get one as a denominator of four, I'm gonna multiply by four over four. So this will be a over four minus, well a times four is four a over four. So a over four minus four a over four, one minus four, that gives me negative three a over four. All right, this will conclude our lesson for the day. I hope that you did well. Um, your assignment has been listed for you. Complete those problems. If you find that you need to come back to this tutorial and, um, and get further help, then by all means. If not, then I will be back at school next week. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend.